by year six i hope you're well so today we're going to be looking at your last lesson on classification if you could just pause the video on this slide so if your knowledge recall quiz so just answer questions one to five either in your book or on seesaw so today we're really looking at habitats and biodiversity so habitat is where an organism makes it its harm and biodiversity which is also known as biological diversity is the variety of life here on earth so it's just absolutely everything that exists on earth in the top right so where might you be able to find them what i want you to do and i'm going to do it at the same time is just on a piece of paper or on cc you can jot it down as you go along if you can um i just want you to make a table of raccoon and fox and you're going to list the possible um, habitats of each so where might you be able to find them so this is what your table should look like so I've just got raccoon and fox and then I'm just going to make my list so I'm going to give you an example um, for example a raccoon can be found in a forest and I know foxes can also be found in forests as well. So I'm going to put that one there. Where else might you be able to find them? So just leave the video playing because we're going to do it at the same time. I know I can't see your answers, but I'll show you mine what I get at the end anyway. So just take about 40 seconds and we'll do it at the same time to create your list. And then we'll share back our answers. So off you go. I'll just give you about 10 more seconds. Okay, so I know we can't see your answers, but hopefully you've got something quite similar to me. So for Rakeen, yeah. I've got forests, mountainous areas, coastal marshes and urban areas that, and oh, oh no, then I've done arrows, so pests, so um, they can live where humans are um, and they can be considered as pests because they go in the rubbish and they're quite pest-like. Um, fox, I've got quite a few, so I see quite a few foxes actually around um, where I live because I've got a park nearby, um, so not in the daytime but yeah they come out every now and then um so forest grassland desert human environment um such as like farms that's where they're usually found so should have something at least if you've got one or two from that list then that's fine we know a habitat is the home of where an organism lives so somewhere where they call home, so somewhere where they should be able to breathe, reproduce and create their own or gather food. So we know animals have a habitat. Do you think plants have a habitat? I want you to just think about that before you move on to the next slide. So we know all living things have a habitat. So yes, animals have a habitat, so do plants. And for plants to have a good habitat, they must provide the right combination of light, air, water and soil. So just remember everything we've done previously in school about how plants survive. Um, the main elements of a habitat are shelter, water, food and space. So shelter is important for not only protection from like predators with animals, but for plants as well. Think about why you need shelter, why plants need shelter, obviously for the right temperature. Um, why might an animal lose an element of a habitat such as space? 
So I just want you to think about that one and pause the video before you move on to the next slide because I'll tell you the answer. So why might an animal lose an element of habitat such as space? Because realistically, they should have everything in that habitat. That's why they've made it their habitat. Why might something all of a sudden just get destroyed? Or, yeah. Well, you probably would have guessed from the hint of the word destroyed in the previous slide. So yes, an animal might lose an element of a habitat such as space. When humans start building homes and businesses, pushing an animal into an area too small for it to survive. So um, we know about deforestation because we've studied that. So that happens in the forest, chopping down trees that destroys thousands of species of habitat. Um, understanding the habitat that an animal lives in is as important as understanding what it eats and how it finds or hunts for its food. So not all have not all animals are able to survive in habitats to, to which are different to where they normally live. They are adapted to survive in certain conditions. So humans destroying that habitat forces the animals to go and find somewhere else to, to, to live. Unfortunately, not all of them can survive in that new area. So now I just want you to answer the following question. So what are the main elements of a habitat and what element of a habitat might animals lose because of humans? So I just want you to go and see so these questions should be on there and I want you to answer those for me, please. Now is your investigation time. So now you can go away. It's not over yet, but you can go away and research about raccoons. So there's, there's an image of a raccoon there. So I want you to find out the original habitat. So where were they for, what was their first habitat and where's their new habitat? How were they able to survive in a new habitat? So something obviously happened to their old habitat and then they moved to a new place. So how and why did Carl Linnaeus study this animal? So I just want you to go and research, fill that out and then resume the video. So now we're looking at biodiversity and how it is affected by humans. So life on Earth is incredibly diverse. Biological diversity, also known as biodiversity, is looking at the different species we have on Earth, so the wide variety of life we have here on Earth. It's not only the species of plants and animals, but it's also microscopic bacteria, microscopic organisms such as viruses and fungi. So biodiversity allows us to live a healthy and happy life because it provides us with food directly through pollination, medical discoveries and ecosystem services. So now we are looking at how biodiversity is affected by humans. So pollution, climate change and population growth are all threats to biodiversity. These threats have caused a rise in extinction. So extinction of animals is obviously, unfortunately, until they no longer existing. Some scientists estimate that half of the species on Earth will be wiped out within the next century. So that's within the next 100 years. So it's really important to preserve biodiversity to protect the endangered species and their habitats through conservation efforts. So that's to conserve and where possible to try and reduce the affecting biodiversity, affecting animals' habitats as less as possible. So now I just want you to pause the video and answer the following questions. What is the name for the variety of life on Earth? Why is biodiversity declining? So declining is decreasing. Give two reasons. Name two things biodiversity provides us with. So given what we've just discussed about ecosystems, about animals' habitats, so we know habitat is everything they need in order to survive. We know humans can often destroy anim um, animals' spaces, so that where they live, then they are forced out of their area to go and try and survive somewhere else, and they're not adapted, they're not able to survive somewhere else, um, mainly because they're just not built that way. So humans are said to be the most dangerous animal on earth. Explain using examples why this could be true. So using that example we've just discussed and obviously biodiversity, so pollution, climate change, how have we had an effect on that? I want you to explain how it could be true. So just in your own words and independently, just use those examples. You don't need to go back to the slides, just use it from memory and just explain how it could be true.
how much of the Earth's surface is covered in water? I just want you to have a guess at that before you move on to the next slide. So two thirds of the Earth's surface is covered in water. So well done if you got that right. If you didn't, don't worry about it. You now know. The ocean is the largest habitat housing millions of species. How has the ocean become damaged over time? I want you to look at the title, which is how are we, we destroying the world's largest habitat, which is the ocean. So I just want you to pause the video, think about it, and then move on to the next slide. You can write it down if you want to, but don't resume the slide until you've thought about the answer. So over the years, due to serious overfishing and devastating plastic pollution, so plastic pollution is one of them which you must have got because it's such a big issue, especially now, it's just getting more of a concern because we're damaging so much of the ocean, so many species in the ocean because of plastic, um, which is why so many people are changing to biodegradable um straws for example people now use like reusable metal straws or rubber straws or even paper straws recyclable um 90 percent of seabirds have plastic fragments in their stomachs that's 90 percent that's 10 percent away from 100 percent our waste can be found on every beach around the world fish stocks have reduced to critical levels as we remove 80 million tons of seafood from the ocean yearly Major bleaching of coral reefs due to the change in water temperature because of global warming means we've lost half of the world's shallow water corals. The ocean provides us with just much more than food. In the vast ocean, microscopic phytoplankton play a huge part in supporting a planet, which we're going to move on to in a moment. So now I just want you to go away.